Welcome to the Leaders of Tomorrow show at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. We started off this new year of 2020 with former CIA spy Robert David Steele and our exclusive interview with multimillionaire investor Mr. Doug Casey. Today, we are excited to be welcoming back to the show Mr. Chris Duane. Chris is a financial investment expert, a self-made multimillionaire, a Marine, a venture capital capitalist, the founder of the Sons of Liberty Academy, and the man behind the YouTube channel, The Greatest Truth Never Told. But he is most famous for being a big-time silver bull. In the precious metals arena, silver has had a very nice 2019, just like gold. However, it was palladium and rhodium whose prices truly have taken off. So today's show is going to be all about precious metals. Chris, welcome back to the show. How are you today? I am excellent. How are you? I am fantastic. We are thrilled and excited to have you here because we all love silver. Chris, now we want to start off with what you think of the state of affairs right now with central banks. We've watched 72 rate cuts around the world in 2019, record balance sheet expansions for the Federal Reserve, and major announcements from the trade deal with China, which is bearish for the dollar. What's on your radar? What do you think is going to make the biggest impact? The, in the Fed, it's always the Fed. This whole, this whole world, this whole paradigm is based off of the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. Um, you know, if we if we were to look at where we spent the 20th century, it was creating debt and death throughout the world. The foundation of the Federal Reserve, they created created the ability for nation states to go into debt. Uh, and essentially, you know, spread death wherever they went. And it culminated with the creation and the advent of world wars. Not possible. World wars are not possible without the creation of central uh, central banks creating fiat money out of thin air. Um, because throughout all of history, whenever kings and nation states went against other nation states and kings, uh, they had to spend real wealth. Now this came in an ingenious invention where cunning central bankers were, had the ability of creating unlimited amount of debt and simply passing it on through inflation, through the creation of the monetary system. So I now look at the Federal Reserve as the creators of this debt and death paradigm that has now created a global generational debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme that has now taken over the entire world. 2008 was an institutional crisis where a few bad banks made a few bad bets and a few bad housing markets and screwed over a few pensions. But none of those people went to jail. None of the practices were stopped. And all that happened was the global debt doubled since 2008. So if anybody remembers how scary it was in 2008, now picture that double. Now picture that uh, pervasive throughout all of the global economy. It wasn't just the United States and maybe England. Uh, Now it's every single country. The debt in China since 2008 has tripled to the point now where their economy is relative to ours Uh, And they're all creating a lot of toxic debt. And right now, if people aren't paying attention to the fact that the Fed is pumping in $85 billion a day, on average probably, uh, since September, they are expanding their balance sheet and and providing liquidity uh, just as bad as it was during the depths of the 2008 financial crisis. And nobody's paying attention. Stock market's still going up. Uh, you know, Tesla stock hitting brand new uh, things. So the way I look at it is this is the beginning of what the, you know, the Austrian economics called the crack up boom. The point where the central bankers realized that they can't fix the system. They can only continue to kick the can down the road. And the only way they can do that is constantly lowering interest rates. So the overall debt burden of this global generational debt based fiat Ponzi scheme doesn't grind it to a halt. Um, because every year our money uh, has to expand more than the debt and interest accrued the year before. So a little trick that they've been doing is lowering the interest rates, punishing savers, punishing people who have, you know, take the prudent step of creating financial reserves um, and forcing everybody into this, you know, Ponzi markets, the stock market, the bond market, the art market, the housing market, the everything bubble. And my feeling is at some point, Michelle, this all ends 
And when it does, it will be the single largest event in human history. And I believe that uh, all these digital illusions of wealth, these future claims on wealth, these, uh, you know, things that are outside of us are going to collapse in asset value on an unprecedented scale globally. And I think it's going to rush down Exeter's pyramid into the most safest and liquid form of money. And I believe that silver is by far the most safest, most liquid, uh, and <laughs> key point, most undervalued asset of all time. And it sits at the very tip of Exeter's pyramid. So I'm simply at the tip. I looked at the whole logical spectrum of where this debt and death paradigm is going to go. It's going to blow up, going to create huge economies, huge uh, differences in wealth and equity and all this other stuff. And then eventually it'll go and then everybody will see that it was all an illusion. And at that point, people are going to realize just how much, how valuable silver is and how much they've suppressed it. And uh, I'm just waiting and I'll wait forever because I know that that's going to be the biggest event in human history. Uh, and I'd rather be 15 years too, too early than one day too late. Right. Now's the time to start to accumulate it because it's, like you say, so undervalued. It's really exciting. I want to stay with the topic of silver because during one of our previous shows, you had predicted a silver price of $900 hmm. per ounce. You didn't put a timing on it, but you did put it up there. And mm -hmm. since that prediction, has your research caused those numbers to be modified at all? Where do you stand today in terms of what you foresee as the price of silver? And do you have a timeline this time? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can go to usadebtclock.org and you can go to their chart where they price silver at $1,123 an ounce relative to every ounce of silver pulled out of the ground globally. So the USA uh, debt clock org in the bottom right hand corner, it's got a uh, dollar to silver ratio. And it's a simply a measurement of the Fed's M2 expansion of new money, <laughs> new money just this year, just the Fed relative to all the mined silver globally. So I think the earth gives us about 800 million ounces of silver every year, to which, you know, through all this consumption of electronics and, you know, solar panels and uh, microscopic, you know, the antibacterial fabrics and all this uses of silver, which is the second most versatile commodity in the world next to oil, and especially in all the high-tech industries of medicine and high-tech, you know, supercomputers, the military, industrial complex, silver is a strategic metal. And right now, uh, we consume more than we mine, but just using this metrics of the Fed expanding their balance sheet or this, the M2 money supply uh, expanding, uh, the Fed is equivalent uh, printing the equivalent of 1,123 fresh new printed dollars relative to every one ounce of silver mined in the world. Folks, that metric alone is frightening because it doesn't include China expanding their M2 monetary supply, and they're equally as big as the United States, or the EU, which is the largest economic thing, doesn't include their expansion of their M2 money supply. So what is it? $1,000 an ounce of silver for every ounce that's pulled out of the ground, 2,000 if you include China, 3,000 if you include the EU, how about 4,000 for the rest of the world, right? That's newly printed money relative to the depleting amount of silver out there, and it gets worse. Okay. There's an estimated one to two billion dollars of silver above ground in in, in uh, investable form, coin, bullion. Uh, I think they include the ETFs, and I'm not so sure that that even exists. But there's six billion ounces of equivalent investment grade of gold, meaning that there's three times less silver above ground in investable format than there is gold. And yet, the gold to uh, silver ratio right now, dollar to dollar, takes one ounce of gold to buy 85 ounces of silver. It's a massive, massive misallocation of wealth. Uh, and I'm not saying gold is overvalued. I think gold is relatively undervalued to the everything bubble. But what I'm saying is that silver is massively undervalued relative to gold. And that's where I think the biggest opportunity for all the, you know, the little hunter, you know, hunt brothers that, you know, are starting to pick up silver. They're starting to realize that the best option to get away from the global generational debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme, the best option of having real tangible wealth 
the best option is to pull their wealth out of their Ponzi system and invest in real tangible wealth that they can touch, feel, and hear. Uh, you know, especially flip those coins in the air. It sounds pretty nice. Cold hard cash is, is good, folks. <laughs> it does sound nice when you get some silver. That's so right. It's, it's fun every time you get it. Now, Chris, how has society changed, say, in the past 50 years in terms of money? Hmm. And I know that you feel that the best way to protect yourself is to accumulate um, precious metals, especially silver. But hmm. what has happened here as far as the mindset and how have we actually allowed this to take mm -hmm. place do you think it's just ignorance or do you think people just don't want to see what's happening no it, it is uh ignorance but it's it's not uh it's not something i don't think one in a thousand people would have picked up on much less you know have uh, an opposition to it um if you look at the monetary history of how we got here how the banking sector became the most powerful industry in the world uh, essentially the new religion of the age. You know, I think we can agree that despite whatever God we pray to, we're all bowing to the dollar you know, or money of some sort. Uh, and then it does have a massive influence in our lives. Uh, let's face it. If we didn't have to go out and make a certain amount of money to go live a certain lifestyle um, or pay off the debts that we accrued during times when we didn't quite understand what the game was, uh, many people wouldn't be doing what, what they're doing right now. I mean, I, I can't tell you, all my, all my best friends, they're in jobs that they don't like, high paying jobs where you would think that they would be happy, but they're just, they're not into it, but they have to do it to support the debts that they have, their kids and, you know, the lifestyle that they've created. So when you hijack money, you hijack a society. Um, and the, the guys that own and control the system know this, right? And uh, they've, they've essentially you know, hijacked all of humanity with this hidden sleight of hand. You know, you gave them, we all gave them the power of creating money out of thin air. You know how powerful that is? You know, and they can decide where it goes to and to what purposes and buy off people and buy off politicians and, you know, buy media and buy, you know, uh, you know, opposition, buy wars. And that's what we've done. We've spread debt and death throughout the world. Anybody who stands in opposition to this, uh, you know, bonnet monetary system, they get death. I mean, look, just look no further than all the wars that we've been involved in since 1913, since the creation of the Federal Reserve and the debts that have accumulated out of that. And think about how many good men have died, you know, and how many families got ripped apart, you know, and for what? To create debt? So I think uh, the reversion, the karma, the payback, the gravity to the situation, it's going to be a massive snapback. Because they started off, the bankers, by demonetizing silver. The crime of 1873 uh, was the demonetization of silver, where the average person, you, me, your parents, we all use silver. That was our money. It was either in form of silver coin or silver you know, certificates, but there was, silver was the back of the money. Gold was there too, but that really was relegated to the, you know, the Wall Street banking you know, people, or the very wealthy, you know, who could afford to, you know, to have gold. And when they demonetized it, they literally cut the ability of everybody's savings to pay off the debts. Uh, and it put the United States into the worst depression, way worse than the Great Depression, right after the crime of 1873. And that's what the Wizard of, Wizard of Oz was about, because there was a silver movement after that. You know, William Jane, Jennings Bryan uh, ran for president, you know, on you know, bringing back the silver platform. And they, they, he, he didn't accomplish that. And ever since then, the banksters, the generational debt and death mongers, uh, have slowly taken our silver out of our money, uh, demonetized it. They've taken it out of our coin now. Uh, they put us onto essentially a gold standard, which was, you know, highly advantaged to the people who own gold uh, and disadvantaged to all the people who saved in silver or, you know, any other form of money. Uh, and then they slowly took us off the gold standard and replaced it with a much more pernicious thing, a pure fiat dollar. Uh, and that was backed by uh, oil, the petrodollar. The two uh, oil shocks were concocted at the highest level of government to raise the dollar price of oil, to use that as a new monetary laundering system, a new basis of uh, supply and demand for the dollar, which would be worthless if it wasn't tied to the purchase of oil. Uh, all the wars that we've fought, Iraq, I, Libya, all these countries, it's all about, been about maintaining the price of oil. But we're coming to an end where even if we had all the control of all or all the oil, which we don't, um, 
you know, the debts that have been accrued over these four generations uh, are so odious and so large that it's preventing even our youngest from even considering having kids, from even considering starting a family. And the demographic shock that that's going to praise uh, as these people get older, uh, they need more. And the unfunded liabilities of $240 trillion, you know, Lawrence Kolokoff, uh, I think he's a Harvard professor, calculated that it's way worse than the $24 trillion of debt that we have. And at this, some point, Michelle, all of this has got to end and nobody sees this coming. And that's what I find amazing. You know, am I, am I the one sane person in a thoroughly insane world? <laughs> right. I, I wonder, <laughs> how doesn't anybody see this? And the problem is, all the policymakers, all the corpor- corporations, the leaders of the churches, everybody who's in power is benefiting off of this system. It's really just the top. And, it's start- and I can't wait for the rest of the people to go, why are we living like this? And, it, and because they've they created this inflation-based money, we now have you know, women in the workforce, which we didn't have 50 years ago, simply to keep up the, 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 the pace of living. And because it's becoming more stressful, it adds more problems to families. I mean, the number one reason for divorces is money, right? So now we've ripped apart families. We've ripped apart, you know, put you know, women into the workforce, uh, you know, divorce. Now everybody's got to have two or three jobs just to maintain this, you know, living. And at some point, people are just going to go, I can't do it anymore. My debts are too large. The, the, the return on my using of, of energy, it's too much. And at some point, it's going to break. And uh, Michelle, like, if that breaks... Food chains break, you know, nation states break, big things break. And that's why I like having physical silver because I don't know what's going to happen once that kicks off, but I do know it's going to be a rough three or four years until some ocean of sanity pops up somewhere. And I like to think that the silver stackers are going to be those oceans of sanity, that they're going to benefit so tremendously off the reversion of this digital illusion scheme into real tangible wealth that anybody owning any silver is going to be uh, you know, like they held lottery tickets because relative to all the devastated assets right now, you know, I don't know how many ounces of silver it would take to buy a, a, a regular house, but I got to imagine the uh, housing prices are going to collapse because the overall economy collapses. Uh, the debts become too odious. Uh, the, the, the local governments become even more rapacious to keep their Ponzi schemes going by raising property taxes. Uh, and it kills the value of all these properties. But I think silver on a dollar basis, if you're still measuring it in dollars, is going to go up tremendous uh, relative to all the assets out there. You know, if you have Tesla stock, if you have a house, if you have anything that's in a bubble, why wouldn't you sell at the top and buy this undervalued, real tangible asset that's been ignored basically by humanity for 140 years and manipulated? Why wouldn't you buy it? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you have it, you know, as 5% of your allocation or 10%? On the slight chance that I might be right, like doom is coming and I better have something like you should have some silver and most people don't mm-hmm. any. Now, when you invest in silver, is it um, just in physical silver or do you also trade in mining stocks? No, no, no. And I, I and that's the thing, like, I feel like this event is going to be like one of those eye of the needle things. I don't think you can be off one iota and, and not get your wealth through to the other side. Um, I don't like cryptos. I don't like mining shares. I don't like silver ETF. I don't like even receipts for a vault somewhere, right? you got to have the metal in your possession because there's just too much counterparty risk. We're talking about the collapse of the dollar. Do you really think like institutions and individuals and stuff, once that a promise of the dollar buying anything goes, what are all the other promises that were laid on top of it? All the corporate, you know, legal lawsuits, the governments, all that other stuff. That's all going to go down the washing tube. You know, like you can't have any digital illusions of wealth. You got to have physical silver or, you know, you can, but, you know, prepare to kiss a goodbye. Cause once the seat, once the economy starts seizing up, You know, maybe the stock market stops trading for a while. You can't get your stocks out. Maybe the the brokerage firm that, you know, you held your thing goes bankrupt. You can't get your stuff out. Maybe the, you know, the money that you would divert it to back to your local bank uh, goes down. You can't get it out. Maybe the dollars that you actually pull out aren't worth anything. Then you're stuck. But if you have physical silver, no matter how much money they print, it's only going to increase the value of that physical silver. And that's why I love it. The no fool, you know, long term. 
you know, well, almost a morbid investment, but I'm so hopeful because I think it's going to transfer wealth to the meek that it will inherit the earth. And I think that people uh, who see this coming, I hope will be, uh, you know, generous and abundant on the other side to create real effective change. So we don't, you know, redo what obviously doesn't work. Right. And it's real interesting. That's been such a prophetic statement for so long that the meek will inherit the earth and the massive transfer of wealth that's coming and so on and so forth. It's been predicted for so long. And um, you made an excellent point that I just want to reiterate to everybody that we sort of have this mindset of, well, if things go bad, I'll pull out my yes. uh, my 401k or I'll uh, liquidate my stocks or yeah. I will do, um, I'll sell my house or I'll do something else. But the fact of the matter is it's so unpredictable that the domino effect behind the her, people, yeah, the herd right, mentality that you know, own the banks and own your stocks and own your house and the people that in, in cryptocurrency. I have friends that are massively into cryptocurrency and I myself, are, you know, I'm very well mm. acquainted with it. I own it myself, so on and so forth. However, you're right. It's all digital. And the fact is, we're not going to be in control of what's going to happen behind the scenes. You'll be the no, last to know. Here. Right. <laughs> You'll be the last to know. You always are. Like we, we don't, the, 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 you know, the guys that benefit off the system, they'll be the first ones out. Um, you know, my hope is that they don't see the whole picture and that they think that, you know, by getting out of stocks and getting into dollars, they'll be okay. And like, you know, it really comes back down to transferring wealth back to people who would be responsible. They didn't do that in the 2008 financial crisis. If there was any justice, if there was any economic reality, if the system wasn't thoroughly rigged, all the people that made the bad bets they would have gone to jail. They would have gone bankrupt. They would have paid the price, not the taxpayers, not the, you know, the writ, you know, populace at large. And uh, that's the, that's the problem. And, and what would have happened is those that were not uh, responsible with the capital that didn't, that didn't profit off those things would be able to go buy Bear Stearns at pennies on the dollar, you know, buy up their assets on pennies on the dollar. Unfortunately, what ended up happening was the Fed back JP Morgan from doing that. Uh, and JP Morgan's been in control of the silver trade ever since then. And, you know, that's another quiet part of the history of silver that people don't get. Silver was a very big part of that 2008 financial crisis because Bear Stearns was short silver. Uh, and I remember on the day, it was uh, St. Patrick's Day of, uh, I can't forget the year, uh, 2008. And, uh, uh, the price of silver had gone basically from $7 to $21 and Bear Stearns was short that the whole way. And it wasn't until uh, silver broke over 20. That's the day that Bear Stearns went broke. Um, and JP Morgan took over their book backed by the Fed uh, and proceeded to plummet silver down from $21 down to eight just prior to the stock market crash happening. Um, and you know, after that, you know, when it started printing all the money, silver went from eight all the way up to $50 to which, you know, they, again, another uh, attack on May 1st, 2011, I think it was, um, you know, where they dropped the price of silver, you know, six, $7 in a span of a few hours. And it's been on a downtrend ever since then, you know, we have had some breath back there and all during that time. So during the time from you know, when I got involved in silver in 2005, all the way up until this whole Bear Stearns crisis, I was like pounding the table. You got to buy silver, you know, JP Morgan, short silver, buy silver, you know, crash JP Morgan, all that stuff was going on. And, um, you know, I watched it go all the way up and I knew even at $50, I wasn't going to sell because I know that that's not the top. The top is no dollars for silver. Silver has got to transfer wealth to the next financial paradigm. And I know that's hard for people to, to imagine, but these currencies don't last long. And especially currencies is mismanaged, you know, uh, on a financial basis, but the karmic basis that the dollar has been uh, doing and all this spreading the debt and death, uh, the system's going to end. And when it does, you need to have physical silver. And silver was a big part of the 2008 financial crisis. And I believe that the rise of silver this time uh, is, you know, the Achilles heel of this entire banking system. You know, if you don't like this world, buy silver. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You've mentioned karma twice. 
um, in terms of the U.S. dollar and how it's been used. Elaborate on that just a little bit. What's your, your philosophical thought? Well, you know, I was in the Marine Corps and, um, you know, I, I grew up, you couldn't be any more conservative Republican, neocon Catholic than me uh, on 9-11. You know, I was in the Marine Corps on 9-11 infantry. Um, and it wasn't until uh, 2005 uh, that I woke up to realize that I was subconsciously, unconsciously programmed into, you know, getting involved into the debt and death paradigm. You know, from a young age, I watched GI Joe. I watched uh, Ali North on TV. I watched a few good men. I watched all these things showing brave men, you know, with incredible pose and determination in the Marines. I was like, God, I don't want to be those guys. And then, you know, get in there and you do feel like a superhero. Like you come back from boot camp and you're like totally transformed. Uh, and you have this very narrow, determined view on the world. And that's where the problem is uh, because those men are then manipulated by cunning men who use them for foreign policy. Uh, and it wasn't until 2005 when I saw the uh, video documentary loose change that I realized nine 11 was not what I thought it was. And it really scared me to think that I might have been killed or killed for a lie. And I vowed from then what else is a lie? And that turned me into the Federal Reserve and the whole banking system and psychology and Edward Bernays and, uh, you know, the rabbit hole is deep and wide. Um, but one thing I know is that America has been hijacked, but America also still has purpose. We're the only place on earth uh, that freedom is going to rise from. Like, we've been hijacked, we're going to get knocked down, but we are going to rise again. Um, because I think the United States has a purpose in this world to show uh, how everybody can win. And I think the promise of America has been, uh, you know, brought over a lot of people, but I think there's going to be, have to be a spiritual renewal, uh, and a spiritual, uh, you know, line in the sand where you say, no, I'm not going to take any more. Um, and I think once enough people do that, we can change the course of where we're going. And my feeling is that, uh, the collapse of the dollar and the power structure there is going to leave a huge, wide open humanity is going to go, what the, what happened? Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be the people who have been calling this for, you know, quite honestly, a very long time. You know, I'm not the only one. I see guys like Peter Schiff, who's been out there even longer than me, mm -hmm. pounding the table on this. And just because we've been wrong thus, you know, timing wise doesn't mean that when it counts the most, and that's what guys like me and Peter are thinking about, when it counts the most, that's when you're going to want that. That's when generational wealth will be created or generational serfdom. Right. And it's very interesting. Our educational system just doesn't teach history of money. And the history of money is so fascinating when you really start to look at it. And you um, touched on several points just um, based in silver, what happened mm -hmm. in the 1800s to silver. And the fact that through the centuries, um, there have been fiat currencies created and fiat currencies destroyed and mm. fiat currencies created and destroyed. It's a pattern. It's just the way money works. And so people who study it and realize it, and it is a shock when you first see it because yeah. it's not taught in school. So you do have to sort of stumble upon this fact. And then all of a sudden, that's when things start to change and you start to really look at what's happening to our money. And then that leads you into what happened in 9-11 and yeah. what, you know, who benefited from it. And then you start yeah. to say, oh my God, right? Yeah. It's a trillions real of dollars. Like this is uh, it, the day before nine. Here's something that people could look up the day before 9-11. So 9-10-01, look up Donald Rumsfeld uh, has a press conference where they can't account. <laughs> Can you imagine this? For $2.4 trillion, right? If you're, you're off in your income tax bill by 100, right? <laughs> Auditors, your, your whole life is upside down. The Pentagon, before 9-11, can't account for $2.4 trillion. And guess where all those files were for that investigation? Right where the Pentagon got hit. So all that goes away. Guess where all the records for Enron were? Building seven. Building seven didn't hang itself. So you can go deep and wide. I mean, the, and, and the point is, people don't know 
that, right? They don't know monetary history. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why I told people not get involved in cryptos because it's literally everything you don't know about money with everything you don't know about technology. It's not a good formula. Like, don't buy it. <laughs> like, it, 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 silver is the easiest thing. It's like, you get it when you hold it. There's nothing else more to that. You get it when you hold it. And that's where I think the biggest thing is because we have this insane population that would go around on their on their thousand dollar phones and going, look at the digits on my screen. I'm so rich. Meanwhile, I'll throw them an ounce of silver and say, you're broke, baby, because you don't have this. It does. It almost seems too simple, doesn't it, Chris? Because yeah. it's extremely um, cheap. But that's how you know it's right. Mm. Like the truth is something that should be just self-evident. Like, duh, holding an ounce of silver versus any digits you could put on a screen, right? Because those digits are only worth something until you transfer it into real wealth. Into like you can have a million dollars sitting in your bank account, right? Your life doesn't change until you use those million dollars to go buy something in the physical realm, whether it's a house, a car, an education, or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's a future promise on wealth. Well, when you realize that that million dollars could, first of all, lose access to it with cryptos. I mean, Peter Schiff was just doing a fun thing about how he got a a free crypto wallet and people started donating money to him going, ha ha, now you own uh, uh, crypto. And he had a couple thousand dollars and then his, oh, his own wallet got hijacked. Like, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it, you know, you can have that with cryptos, but all, I'm telling people with the banking system, look at 2008, look what happened in Greece and um, Cyprus and Venezuela and stuff like Argentina. Once the system goes sideways, folks, you won't get your money back. They'll use it to get them out. Wow. So, I, you know, having even money in the bank is all you're doing is creating risk in your life. You just created risk because now it's not, it's an asset to the bank and a liability to you because you don't know if you can get that money back. So why would you keep it there? I'm all in on physical silver. You are. But for people, yeah, for people who are, you know, even thinking about this, if you don't have 5% of your net wealth in physical silver, I, I like. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> right. Chris, this has been an amazing interview. It's always so much fun to have you on this show. We always love to hear your insights, and we all love precious metals. Um, now, you have a huge That's, that's, that's a great compliment because you're talking, you know, you just got to talking to CIA guys and Doug Casey, which are, you know, people oh, yeah. I would want to listen oh, to. Oh, so wow. I, I we we are. That. So privileged to have just stellar guests on this show. I tell you what, including yourself, you have a hugely popular YouTube channel that I'd like you to share with everyone just in case for folks that haven't heard of it yet. Yeah, it's the greatest truth never told on YouTube. We have like 170,000 subscribers. I've been on it since 2011. Um, and basically, I you know just really focused on, I've covered... I had 1,800 videos, but I ended up taking them all down and just focused on silver right now uh, because I think that's the only thing that really matters from here until whenever the financial collapse happens is just pointing people to the same, you know, sanity of silver. Uh, I happen to have my own silver brand, uh, Silver Shields, where I've created, you know, well over 400 designs over uh, the last seven years uh, with the Golden State Mint. And, uh, you know, it's growing even faster now because I just came out with new designs like uh, Trump Year of the Pig. Uh, I did uh, No Lie Gets to the Other Side. Uh, I'm just starting my new uh, Pyramid of Power series. And the first one is We Indoctrinate You with a, a skull teacher saying, you know, don't ask questions and do as you're told. Uh, so I've made this kind of unique conscious art in the form of silver, which I think is going to be legendary on the other side, uh, because I think the most profound art is uh, the medium is the message. You know, so, you know, uh, Michelangelo's frescoes and stuff, the, his, the ability that he created that is part of his art. You know, the simple fact that it wasn't a sketch, that it was a fresco, made it more. Well, now I have all this conscious art exposing the debt and death paradigm, um, and also in, in uh, inspiring people through conscious uh, designs. I got chakra designs. I got you know, sacred geometry. I've got, you know, myths and lores and legends and, you know, the cardinal virtues and all these other things. Um, but it's now created this very unique little subset inside the silver world 
um, that I don't think has been fully recognized. And I think once we have recognition of the global generational debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme, uh, the need for real tangible wealth, people will flow to gold and then eventually find silver because it's so undervalued. Uh, and at some point, it's going to outperform gold on, you know, two, three, four, five, ten times uh, whatever uh, percentage gold goes up, silver is going to go up faster. And then in that little subset, somebody's going to go, oh, <laughs> look what Chris has been doing for the last eight <laughs> years. And then look at all the designs and go, oh, <laughs> not only did he do that, he also called this when nobody else saw it. And I think at that point, uh, all those silver shield coins that I've done, you know, any one of them are going to be like, wow, <laughs> this is something amazing, right? This is something that you know, and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the system does go on for another 100 years and I end up dying just this little silver art guy. But I don't think so. I don't think it can get kicked down any further. And I think the ramifications are just not calculated in the market, certainly not in Dow 29,000, right? At some point, the system is going to uh, seize up. Uh, all the lies are going to be exposed and uh, people are going to rush for safety. And I fear that uh, the the herd mentality is simply not going to allow you to move your money when it matters. And either you're ready today or you're fooling yourself. Now, where would everybody find the silver shield coins? Yeah, only at goldenstatement.com. Um, they're the exclusive, you know, you're buying a mint direct, which is another fantastic, you know, I love our business model. That's the only reason why I've been able to be in business in a seven year bear market when I've had all these other people try to come in and copy the same formula that I've been doing. I'm the only one that's been able to keep doing this, mainly because I'm just tenacious. Like, I'm never going to give this up. Uh, and I'm also the biggest buyer of my own silver. So every time I, you know, release a new coin, I'm the one buying you know, the majority <laughs> of it because, you know, well, how cool is that? Like, I get to design and create, you know, different designs for me. Like, I created the whole silver show because I hated the government bullying. I hated the fact that majority of them had the Queen of England on it. I'm like, why would I want her... Face, ugly face on my silver and then you know you look at the silver eagle shoot there's like 200 million of them all they do is change the little date it's government bullion and oh yeah goldman sachs is the treasurer of that so why would i want to give money to the government that's already destroying my dollars and to get a boring ass design that's been around for 40 years and all they do is change a little so i didn't i didn't like that and then all that's left was just boring bullion you know buffaloes and you know silver rounds that never go up in value over the manipulated price of silver so I created a whole new model in the middle of it where I come out with limited edition stuff that sells for comparable to the, you know, the national mints, uh, come with the certificate of authenticity and go up in value on eBay where they're double spot. Now I have this little community of people who buy some, hold it for a while, and then sell them on eBay for higher premiums to go back and go buy more silver. So it's a great little thing that's been brewing. But I'm telling you, Michelle, at some point, and I only have like a few hundred customers, Wait until I have a few thousand, you know, 10,000, you know, 100,000, million. Like the growth of this, I think, is going to be tremendous because, um, you know, a lot of people are going to start coming down <laughs> and go, oh, I need gold. I need silver. Oh, what's this? I like that. Right, right. Those sound awesome. Repeat that website one more time for everyone. Did you say goldenstatemint.com? Yeah, goldenstatement.com. And then uh, under collections, you know, you'd have to, you can dig around in there, but there is a Silver Shield collection. We have uh, bullion products are available all year long. Uh, I know we have the best looking gold coin in the world and also the lowest mintage. It's the Gold Freedom Girl. Um, so that that's a beautiful thing. I only own one ounce of gold. So um, I am all in on silver. I just have this beautiful <laughs> original design that I did from from that one. But, uh, you know, other than that, I have a lot of silver products, a 10 ounce, uh, Jesus clears the temple bar, which is, you know, very popular. Um, we just came out with the no lie gets to the other side. Uh, and that's kind of this new, new, I don't even know how to describe it. Art. Uh, it's very different. You've never seen anything like it. And it basically, you know, points out that, you know, no lie, you know, this paradigm, you know, all the inequities that have been built, it's going to get to the other side of whatever the crisis is. I don't think they're going to be able to kick the can down the road. I think the ramifications and of the collapse are going to be so large and that the people in power don't see it coming um, and they won't know what to do when it gets here. And then I think that's what's going to really help those people who did see things coming uh, to be the safe, you know, rational 
adult in the room that said, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. I have to protect my family. I have to protect myself. I have to protect my savings. I sacrificed too much and too much energy and time to simply have it go away like in Venezuela. I mean, if you want to look at the future of the United States, look at what Venezuela is going through. I mean, these people are losing 20 pounds a year because they're just starving. Um, and they were a very wealthy nation at one point. And uh, it's amazing how uh, how quickly hyperinflation can just destroy all social structure. And I think that's what's going to be needed. You're going to need to have physical silver. Right, right. Always best to be prepared. Chris, thank you so much for coming on this yes. show today. Thank you, Michelle. Mr. Chris Dwayne, precious metals expert and the man behind the greatest truth never told. For the leaders of tomorrow's show, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. 